Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kiran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. Well, good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 18th of January, 2022, and we'll start off with the nationwide daily COVID report. The country registered 13 more COVID-19 fatalities and 6,929 new cases during the previous 24 hours, the Public Health Ministry announced on Monday morning. This compared with the 8,077 cases reported yesterday and the nine fatalities on Sunday morning. Api Samai Sirisang, assistant spokesperson for the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, said in the afternoon briefing that the 13 new fatalities were between the ages of 69 and 92. Now, as I said, we had 6,929 confirmed cases with 1,740 probable cases by way of ATK testing. We had 13 deaths, as we said. 209 cases were from abroad. Out of the 82,210 patients, 45,771 are in hospital. There are 533 in serious condition, with 108 on ventilators. Now, Chonbury Public Health Office was reporting 454 new cases and no deaths. Most of the cases were in Chonbury City, 61, Siracha, 108, and Banlamung, Patia, 208. There are now 7,329 patients in care. Phuket health officials reported 522 new cases, out of which 398 are local and 124 from abroad. There were no reported deaths, and there are now 4,598 people in care. Now, in terms of vaccinations here in the kingdom, 172,437 people were vaccinated yesterday. Most people were receiving their third dose. Now, just to give you an idea of the percentages, first dose in Thailand currently 71.9%, second dose 66.1%, and finally, people with three doses is currently at 14.1%. And we'll start off with the first story of the day, police raid homes of multiple reporters. Over the weekend, Thai authorities raided the homes of multiple reporters, accusing them of being involved in the ongoing anti-government protests. The three journalists who were targeted have been covering the political unrest since July 2020, when anti-government demonstrators broke out. Immediately following their arrest, they took to social media to talk about what happened, stating that they were threatened by police. Police came to my house and talked to my father without a police identity card, said Suramet Noy Uban, one of the reporters from Friends Talk. They accused me of being involved in the Talagaz group, referring to the fringe organization of disenfranchised protesters. Suramet has filed a lawsuit today against two police who raided his house. Investigators told him that police only wanted to keep in contact with him since he's a reporter, Suramet said. Many suspected that these raids were conducted under a new decree signed on July 29th, drafted to allegedly stop the spread of fake news and information that incites fear or causes instability to the state. But critics say the law would be used to muzzle free press and infringe their rights, effectively blocking their ability to publish. Ciro Tlampai Boon, a prominent reporter for Voice TV, released a leaked document which revealed his name on a government watching list. He says this is why he was questioned and the likely reason why his house was raided. What do you expect to get from me for this intimidation? Sirat wrote on his account. Is the government trying to wipe out its people or looking for a way to charge them? Sirat added that this is not the first time police raided his home. He said police intimidation has created an atmosphere of fear for his family. This kind of intimidation intends to create fear for my aged mother, he wrote. Sirat received a police summons earlier this year on November 20th. He is facing charges for participating in the protests over the last year, but he argues that he was simply doing his duty as a reporter. All I want to see is law enforcement carry out proper procedures in accordance with the law. Suramat said. And next up, about half of inspected vehicles are polluters. Around half of all vehicles randomly checked on the roads were polluters with exhaust emissions exceeding legal limits, the Pollution Control Department said. Officials ordered 234,176 commercial vehicles, 
lorries, trailer trucks, buses and pickups to pull over for exhaust fume checks last year and 114,888 of them, or 49%, were over the limit, Director General Atapal said in a statement issued on Monday. Private cars, motorcycles and other vehicles registered for private use fared little better, with 48% of 123,640 vehicles inspected by the department found to be polluting the streets. The figures were compiled from random checks across the country last year. The department set up roadside checkpoints and randomly checked vehicles' exhaust fumes. The Land Transport Department and the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration also take part and run their own checks. Violators face fines and the vehicles can be ordered off the road until the engine is brought up to standard. Mr. Atapal said more checkpoints were planned on main and secondary roads in the capital and neighbouring provinces this year, with Greater Bangkok plagued by harmful particle levels. And moving along, Commerce Ministry to propose 1.4 billion baht plan to reduce cost of living. A 1.4 billion baht proposal will be submitted to the Cabinet for consideration by the Ministry of Commerce to reduce the cost of living for people in Thailand amid rising prices in essential products. According to the Commerce Ministry, the Ministry plans to propose 1.4 billion baht allocation during Tuesday's Cabinet meeting to fund programmes and new measures to help people reduce their cost of living for three months. He stated Prime Minister General Prayat chan has expressed interest in the proposal and asked for additional details. He added that distribution stations will hold discount campaigns nationwide with essential products such as chicken, pork, eggs and other necessities to be offered at communal courtyards, mobile grocery, fresh markets, department stores, convenience stores and gas stations. The ministry is also going to expand blue flag low cost programs to reach out to communities nationwide with essential goods and products. The ministry plans to facilitate product distribution by utilizing its mobile commercial vehicle program offering consumers discounts. Officials are meanwhile keeping a close watch on the market and will take legal action against profiteering and hoarding by traders. Watta Sanak Suryam, Director General of the Department of Internal Trade, said the ministry will negotiate with manufacturers and traders in order to maintain product pricing. He also said officials are working on postponing measures to boost product price in order to alleviate the burden on consumers. Additionally, the minister intends to impose temporary price controls on products through the Central Committee on the Prices of Goods and Services if they are judged to be unusually high. And speeding along, global tourism about to rebound, luxury hotel operators say. Global tourism is on its way to a long-term sustainable recovery as more travellers and countries recognise the endemic nature of COVID-19, according to hotel operator Banyan Tree Holdings Limited. Hotels and tourism rely on Thailand, which kept its so-called Phuket Sandbox open as a pathway for international travellers to skip quarantine, hasn't seen major cancellations after the emergence of Omicron, Banyan Tree Executive Chairman Ho Kwan Ping said in a Bloomberg television interview on Monday. While the pickup in new bookings is slower because people want to be cautious, there's a recognition that it's going to become endemic and that recognition is changing people's attitude, Ho said. That's why we're so optimistic. While many nations have reintroduced some restrictions to slow the spread of the Omicron variant, some countries have refrained from a broad lockdown. Thailand widened its sandbox tourism program to three more provinces. Krabi, Panya and Suratani last week after suspending quarantine-free visas for vaccinated visitors with Indonesia, while Indonesia has kept Bali open to international arrivals with some curbs as well. The point is whether Thailand and the world is definitely back for a rebound. We've seen dead cat rebounds in the past with Omicron replacing Delta, Ho said. The tourism industry in Phuket is optimistic about a recovery and feels that this is the beginning of the end, he said. Singapore-based Banyan Tree launched five new brands over the past two years, including in China and Thailand, betting on a tourism rebound, Ho said. Banyan Tree properties on the resort island of Phuket saw about 70% occupancy in the final weeks of December and expects about 55-60% to in January, with occupancy averaging 40-50% to in the first quarter of this year. The room rates continued to be a third of what they were before COVID because of a massive oversupply of rooms following the incredible sudden overnight collapse of the market, he said. It's going to take a long time for the full recovery, 
The main question is, are we really on the path for a long-term sustainable recovery? And the indication is pretty much yes, Ho said. So we will talk about this story after we do the next story. Government Mulls Resuming Quarantine-Free Travel Programme The government may revive the quarantine-free visa programme for vaccinated travellers from abroad less than a month after suspending the waiver as fears of a new wave of Omicron-driven COVID cases recede. Officials will propose lifting the suspension of the Test and Go program to the nation's virus task force led by Prime Minister Prayachana Chan Thursday, Deputy Prime Minister and Public Health Minister Anatan Sharabakul said today. While the Omicron coronavirus variant is highly contagious, the outbreak is still under control in the kingdom due to the successful vaccination program and COVID containment measures still in force, Mr. Anatan said. Entertainment venues such as bars and pubs, which have been shut for almost a year, will remain closed because of the higher risk of spreading infection in those establishments, he said. The Thai Bat rallied as much as 0.5% on expectations the return of foreign tourists may help the country reverse a current account deficit. The currency traded at 33.034 to a US dollar, the strongest level since November 23rd, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. While Thailand saw a jump in new cases after the Christmas and New Year celebrations, they are far below their peak during the Delta wave and have yet to overwhelm the nation's healthcare system. Mr. Anatan said authorities want to ensure that people are able to continue to conduct business and make a living. The government has experimented with several plans over the past two years to try revive the travel sector that used to contribute to about one-fifth of the economy, with 40 million foreign tourists generating about 2 trillion baht in 2019. The Test and Go program, which allowed vaccinated travellers from more than 60 countries to skip quarantine, helped attract about 350,000 visitors in just two months before it was suspended. Authorities last week widened the Phuket Sandbox tourism programme to Krabi, Panya and Koh Samui to lure holiday makers. So this is potentially some good news for hospitality businesses within the kingdom, for foreign travellers abroad and of course for travel agents abroad who have all banked on Thailand being open since November of last year. The only issue I can see with this reopening of the Test and Go program is probably the lack of people that will come. There is a certain amount of hesitancy now in relation to Thailand and its ability to be consistent with its rules and regulations and how it reacts to COVID. And unfortunately, Thailand has kind of become unreliable in relation to this. A lot of travel agents have already cancelled their charters now for this high season. So there's going to be not as many planes out there to bring people or at least the people who want to come. And then also there's the confidence in the tourism sector in Thailand and the government and whether or not they have the ability to keep the country open regardless of Omicron infections or not. Now, the one thing that I have heard over the past couple of days is everybody is now talking about COVID and being endemic in the next few months. But yet, I don't, as we discussed yesterday, I don't think they understand what that endemic means. So it's hard to know if they're actually really prepared for it. Now, another issue that Thailand has, and they need to get their act together, is in relation to tourists getting COVID and high risk contacts Tourists now are starting to hear and get wind of what happens when you come to Thailand and you test positive or you've been with somebody who has tested positive. And that is a huge deterrent for people because at the end of the day, people don't want to come on a 10-day holiday and have it turn into a 20-day holiday, a very expensive holiday at that. So the government need to find new ways to at least ensure that high-risk contacts are treated fairly. And of course, these are high-risk contacts who have been probably double or triple vaccinated at that. Now, if you look at other countries and what they're doing, I think that's the way Thailand needs to focus. They need to focus on what other countries are doing in relation to people who are high-risk but are fully vaccinated. And if you look at a country like my own Ireland at the moment, they have completely changed the rules in relation to this. High-risk contacts who are boosted in my own country, do not have to self-isolate, do not have to restrict their movements. They do have to wear a mask for 10 days to ensure that they don't spread anything. And they have to do undergo regular ATK or rapid antigen tests. 
But that's all they have to do. There's no quarantining for 14 days in a hotel. And that's what they do here in Thailand, even if you're double or triple vaccinated. So this kind of thing needs to be sorted out by the government if they plan to reopen this test and go. Now, the meeting is on this Thursday, so we should hear more. Now, I fully expect if they do decide to reintroduce the test and go, it won't be until February before it happens. But still, it would be a good thing in my estimation. The country needs tourism and it needs money and people need to make a living. I wouldn't listen too much to hospitality professionals like Mr. Ping from Banyan Tree. At the end of the day, I just had a look at their rates and they're still charging nine and a half to 10,000 baht per night to stay in their resort. So I'm sure they're doing okay, even with those nice low rates. At the end of the day, I do feel the government were too quick to suspend the whole test and go program. And I do think it needs to be reopened, reintroduced. And we need to try to get back to a certain amount of normality here in the country. But things such as how you treat COVID positive, fully boosted tourists and locals, how you treat high risk contacts who are fully boosted and vaccinated, of course, needs to change. And that needs to be looked at. And a new approach needs to be taken to all of this in order for tourists to have some kind of confidence when they come to Thailand. Because a nice 10 day holiday can turn into a nice 14 or 20 day nightmare if things go wrong for you. Now, of course, tourists are taking a risk when they travel and that has to be said too. The rules and regulations are pretty much now on YouTube everywhere. I mean, there's so many stories in the press. So if you don't know at this point, well, I merely say, well, you haven't been really keeping track of what's going on and you haven't done your research before you left. Traveling during a pandemic is risky. I think we all know that. And there is a certain amount of risk you must take if you're going to travel to a foreign country during this period. Now, I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this. Do you think the test and go program should be reintroduced? Do you think they should continue on with the sandbox programs for a couple of more months? Do you think they should just drop the whole thing and open up the country again? I'd love to know your comments, guys, as always, down below in the comments section. And next up, historical wooden home burnt down in Hat Yai. Residents of a historical community fled for their lives as the fire destroyed six of their timber homes in Hat Yai Township on Monday. The fire began about 10.30 a.m. in house number 61, located deep in a narrow soy lined with densely packed old wooden houses behind the district office in Hat Yai Municipality. The blaze spread quickly to adjacent houses. Fire engines and crews rushed to the scene and were able to bring the fire under control in about half an hour, but by then six houses had been consumed by the flames. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Police Captain Chop Suntorn, a duty Hat Yai investigator, said an investigation has already started to determine the cause of the blaze. And finally, the Phuket News Daily Report. Phuket Fort Jabs Roll Out to Public. Phuket health officials have begun rolling out fort vaccination injections to the public as the island continues its mass vaccination campaign. Phuket internet connections straining under work from home. Phuket internet connections have been straining from an increase as much as 25% in internet usage following the work from home mandate being issued. And finally, Southern peace talks held in Phuket. Leading members of the BRN were in Phuket over the weekend for talks with a Southern Border Province Peace Dialogue Panel led by National Security Council Secretary General, General Wanlap Raksano. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.